We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus. Hi, this is Samuel Chukwemeka Omaka, the preacher of the Church of Christ, Odo Mekekere, Ibadan. I welcome you to today's edition of Sword of the Spirit. And I want to thank all of you who have watched our previous videos, those who are subscribed to our channel. I also want to beg those who have not subscribed to please subscribe and please spread the message around. You can help save a soul. Today we want to talk about an important subject and that is the subject of the Kingdom of Christ. We want to ask the question, when will the Kingdom of Christ come? We have people in the society who believe that the Kingdom is yet to come. In other words, they believe that Christ came initially to build the Kingdom or to establish his kingdom. But due to the rejection of the people, uh, he brought in the New Testament church as a substitute for the main time until he comes again to establish the kingdom that he intended to establish in the first place. How true is this argument? We want to look into the scriptures this morning to know or to see what the kingdom is all about. And after that, we look at the fact if the kingdom has come or if the kingdom is yet to come. John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 was the first person to start preaching about the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 3, when we read that passage, he was in the wilderness preaching to the people, telling them to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The phrase at hand means that the kingdom of heaven was near. It was not something far away. And so John the Baptist was telling the people of that time that the time to repent was now because the kingdom of heaven was about to come. And the people understood the message. And the scripture recorded that all Judea and Jerusalem went down to John the Baptist and they were all baptized. These people repented, went to be baptized because they understood the message that a kingdom was about to be established and they need to get ready in order to enter that kingdom. Shortly after Christ was baptized, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible recorded that he went about preaching saying that the kingdom of God is at hand and people should repent of their sin. John the Baptist was saying the kingdom was about to begin. He wasn't saying it's going to take a thousand years more time. He was telling the people in his generation they need to repent right now, they need to be baptized right now in order to get ready for the acceptance of that kingdom. And that is the same thing that Christ was preaching in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. At hand, of course, we all understand, means something which is about to begin. In Matthew chapter 6, when we read verse 9 down to verse 10, Jesus instructed the apostles to pray for that kingdom. And then in Matthew chapter 10, when we read from verse 6 down to verse 7, he sent his apostles to the lost sheep of Israel to go and tell them to repent and to preach to them that that kingdom that they have been waiting for, that has been prophesied right from the time of the Old Testament, was at hand and people needed to repent. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, after Peter made a confession that Christ is the son of the living God, Christ promised to build his church upon that confession that Peter made in verse 18. And he promised that the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. In verse 19, he said he would give Peter the key of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Christ was saying that the church and the kingdom are one and the same thing. The only problem that people have is that we are defining the kingdom in the way that we want it to be, not allowing the king in person to tell us the nature of the kingdom that he was coming to establish. And in that passage, he made it very clear that he was going to build his church. In verse 19, he said he would give Peter the key of the kingdom of heaven. So if the kingdom of heaven is not something that was about to begin, 
what key was he promising Peter in that passage? Now, when we get to Mark chapter 9 and verse 1, Christ said, That as shortly I say unto you, that there are many people standing here who will not test death until they see the kingdom of God coming down with power. Look at the trend. It's becoming more obvious. It's becoming, it, the, the kingdom of God is becoming a more obvious thing here he was trying to tell them that they who were hearing him at that time that some of them standing will not test death until they see the kingdom of God coming down with power in Acts of Apostle chapter 1 verse 8 Christ told his apostles that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them Mark 9 1, the kingdom is coming with power. And Acts of Apostle chapter 1, verse 8, the apostles are going to receive that power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And in Acts chapter 2, on the Pentecost day, the Holy Spirit did come upon the apostle. And the apostle did receive that power, which enabled them to speak in all the tongues of the Bible. Peter preached the gospel on that very day. And after Peter has preached the gospel, he concluded in verse 36 of Acts chapter 2. He said, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Peter announced to the people that Jesus has been coronated as the Lord and as the King on the Pentecost day. And the people understood the message of Peter. And they asked Peter, what shall we do? In other words, what shall we do to enter that kingdom? What shall we do to become citizens of that kingdom? And Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of them, for the remission of sins. And for them to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. After the event of Acts of Apostles chapter 2, the kingdom was never spoken of as something that is still going to come. Rather, the kingdom was being discussed as something that is already in existence. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 13, Paul, writing to the Colossian brethren, urged them to thank God the Father who has actually made it possible for them to share the inheritance of the saints. And what is that inheritance? He said, He has conveyed them from the kingdom, from the powers of darkness, into the kingdom of His dear Son. So if the kingdom of Christ is not yet in establishment, which kingdom were the Colossians' brethren conveyed into by God? that was thanking God for. In Matthew 6, Christ asked the apostle to pray for the kingdom. But here in this passage, Paul was urging the brethren to thank God because he has converted them into that kingdom. The apostle John, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, he wrote to the persecuted Christians. He said, I, John, your brother in tribulation and kingdom, and patient of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said he is a brother with the saints in the tribulation they are passing and in the kingdom they are in and in the patience of the Lord Jesus Christ. The early Christians, the apostles, they all understood that they were in the kingdom. The problem we have is that we fail to understand the nature of the kingdom of Christ. And just like the early Jews who were expecting a physical kingdom on the physical structure that has its headquarters in Jerusalem, many people today are making the same mistake. Christ said in John chapter 18 that his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not what people think it is. And therefore, the early Christians understood what the kingdom was. 
the apostles understood what the kingdom was. The early Christians appreciated the fact that they were in the kingdom of Christ. And so do the apostles. And there are some other arguments that comes up when it comes to the issue of the kingdom. People used to ask the question, if the kingdom of heaven is not present, why is it that people are suffering? Why is it that people are still dying? Why is it that there are still bad people in the world? And because of this thing, they believe that the kingdom is not yet established. That when the kingdom is established, none of those things is going to exist. But that is an error on its own. Because the Bible never said that during the kingdom of Christ, none of those things are going to exist. The Bible never said that. This is our problem of understanding what the real kingdom of Christ was all about. And therefore, for us to understand um, or to clear that argument, let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to take the reading from verse 24. Is it true that when the kingdom of Christ comes, there's not going to be de uh, uh, dead, there's not going to be dying or suffering or bad people? Was that what the Bible says about the kingdom of the Son? The scripture has this to say. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24, I'm going to take the reading down to verse 26. It says, Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. I want you to pay close attention. He said, when the end comes, during the end or the second coming of the Lord, he is not coming to establish a kingdom. Rather, he is coming to deliver his already existing kingdom to the Father. And he said he must reign, verse 26, he is reigning and he must continue to reign till the last enemy is put to death. In other words, he is reigning now and he is reigning in the midst of his enemies. His net, the Bible never said that Christ is going to reign in a kingdom that is free of troubles, free of death, or free of enemies. That is not what the Bible says. That is what we think. But the scripture said he is reigning now and he is reigning in the midst of his enemies. And he will reign until the last enemy is put to death. And the Bible said that the last enemy that will be destroyed in the kingdom of Christ is death. So the argument of why is, it that, why is there death? Why are people dying? Why are people suffering? Why are there bad people in the world? Since the kingdom of Christ has come, is lame. The Bible never taught that. The Bible said that the son is going to reign in the midst of his enemies. And that is exactly what is happening there. now. Still on this. Christ himself said something on this subject of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, when we read from verse um, 43, or let's take the reading from verse 41, when Christ was explaining the parables of the tares. Christ explained what the end of the world would look like. Let's look at what, the, what uh, the, the Lord Jesus said in this passage. From verse 41, it said, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. That's what the Bible says. 
Christ said in his second coming, he is not coming to establish a kingdom. Rather, he is coming to judge his already existing kingdom, to gather out of his already existing kingdom all things that offend and they that practice lawlessness and deliver them into the fullness of fire. And they that we are faithful in his kingdom will be handed over into the kingdom of the Father for them to shine forth as light, as the sun. That is what the Bible says. And so if you are still waiting for the kingdom of Christ, it shows you don't understand your Bible, your scriptures. Actually, the kingdom is already in existence. The kingdom is the New Testament church. And that is where the people of the Pentecost Day were baptized into. And for you to be part of that kingdom today, you need to do the same thing that the people on the Pentecost Day did. When they heard that in verse 36 that God has made Jesus Lord and Christ, when Peter announced to the people that the coronation of the Lord Jesus Christ has taken place in heaven, the people asked, what shall we do? In other words, what shall we do to be part of that kingdom? And Peter was very simple in his message. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you should receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So why are you waiting today? Like Ananias was they, uh, told Paul in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Get into the kingdom. Do not wait because the kingdom is already within you. The kingdom is already established and it is the New Testament church. This is your opportunity. Visit the Church of Christ closer to you. Drop your question on the comment box and we will attend to it. And if you care to be saved, let us know and we will help you to provide you with accurate information on what the New Testament says about the salvation of man. Do not wait any further because tomorrow may be too late. My name is Samuel Lomaka and I encourage you to subscribe to our channel in order to receive notification anytime we drop a new video. God bless you for your attention. Thank you.